according to the flesh for if you live according to the flesh you shall die but if by the spirit you mortify the deeds of the flesh you shall live for whosoever are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God for you have not received the spirit of bondage again in fear but you have received the spirit of adoption of sons whereby we cry Abba father for the Spirit himself giveth testimony to our spirit that we are the sons of God, and if sons, heirs also, heirs indeed of God, and joint heirs with Christ. We stand for the Holy Gospel, taken from St. Luke. At that time, Jesus spoke to his disciples this parable. There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said to him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for you can be steward no longer. And the steward said within himself, What shall I do? Because my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. To dig I am not able, to beg I am ashamed. I know what I will do, that when I shall be removed from the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Therefore, calling together every one of his Lord's debtors, he said to the first, how, dost, how much dost thou owe my Lord? But he said, A hundred barrels of oil. And he said to him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, How much do you owe? Who said, A hundred quarters of wheat. He said to him, Take thy bill and write eighty. And the Lord commended the unjust steward for as much as he had done wisely. For the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. And I say to you, make unto you friends of the mammon of iniquity, that when you shall fail, they may receive you into everlasting dwellings. Thus are the words of today's holy gospel. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear seminarians, brothers, dear sisters, dear faithful. We know every word from our Lord's mouth is precious and contains so much fruit for us. The story he tells today, this parable, is one that has a meaning that is not immediately apparent. There's some obscurity. It's a bit mystifying. Often we hear this gospel and we wonder, what does he mean when he says, make friends of the mammon of iniquity, that when you will fail, they may receive you into everlasting dwellings? Why does this Lord praise the unjust steward? This morning I'd like just to dwell upon this aspect of today's gospel, of this parable, these mystifying words, and then to draw for ourselves, for our daily lives, our spiritual lives, some fruit. So firstly, the words of our Lord, and the Lord commended the unjust steward. What's he praising him for? What's he commending him for? Well, not for being unjust. Okay, certainly, this, this Lord is not praising that defrauding. In fact, this steward will probably be punished for that. But insofar as he had done wisely, there was a certain shrewdness. There was a certain dedication Certain, in a sense, ad, it was admirable. Well, why is our Lord highlighting this? Well, he continues. Because the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. In other words, if worldlings can be so clever, so wise for their own 
benefits which don't last, which have no real value, why cannot the children of light do the same for what lasts forever, for what actually matters? That's the first lesson. Of course, there are so many lessons. I'm just going to take a couple. It's a certain rebuke to us, unfortunately, lukewarm Catholics, so outdone by those in the world for their own gains, their own advantage, which ends at death. If we think of, just for the sake of example, if we take uh, take a world championship bodybuilder from a few generations ago, perhaps his glamorous image still plasters weight room walls all around the world. But if we think, what about now? He who had this, this moment of glory, well, now this body is the food of worms. All this fame, do people still even know his name? All the wealth that he accumulated, probably being fought over by his relatives. All his trophies gathering dust somewhere, perhaps at a garage sale. And yet his whole life, if you think about how much devotion he had to have at every aspect, how many hours poured into this domain, which the moment he dies is over, even before then as he ages. If he can be so devoted to that, how can we be so apathetic for a crown that does not die, for glory that is real, that has no end? And the Lord commended the unjust steward. Make to yourselves bags which do not grow old, a treasure in heaven which does not fail, where no thief approaches, no moth corrupteth. And then he continues. Our Lord, finishing this parable, and I say to you, make unto you friends of the mammon of iniquity. What does he mean? Make friends of the mammon of iniquity. What is mammon? Well, literally, mammon is riches. We can, we can take that broadly and say all possessions. Even more broadly, all creatures. All that's not God himself. Make unto you friends of the mammon of iniquity. That when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting dwellings. Put yourself at your judgment. Your particular judgment, the moment you die, and pretend, okay, this is the image that's being used, that everything that you possessed, your time, your talents, everything, is there at your judgment. Each of these things, is it going to be my friend receiving me into heaven? Or will it be an enemy accusing me, condemning me? Make of yourselves friends of the things of this world. In other words, use them such that when you come to your judgment, they will be advocating for your salvation and not for your damnation. So that when you shall fail, when you die, they may receive you into everlasting dwellings. The church fathers speak about drawing from this the importance of alms, using riches such that they will gain for us a crown. But we must not leave it there. It, it applies to everything, to all creatures. Don't let them draw into hell. Let them be passed to heaven. There was a man who was living a very successful life. And he was, he was on vacation with his girlfriend in Switzerland. Unfortunately, they were living a, a sinful life. 
he, he had put, yes, all his treasure in this world. He was successful. He had really all that the world had to offer. So they went to this ski resort in Switzerland in the Alps. And they are skiing one day and there's an avalanche. Uh, an avalanche which completely buries them in the snow. And as he lies there buried in the snow, he, he's completely helpless. It's far too deep to try to dig out. Well, he has certainly a lot of time to reflect. A lot of time to look over his life. Perhaps to ask, have I been making friends of the mammon of iniquity, of the things of this world? And certainly his answer was no. There as he lay there in the snow, buried, and as he looked at next to him the dead body of his girlfriend, he had hours and hours to contemplate eternal realities. Death, judgment, hell. After eight hours, he was rescued. This man would decide to leave everything and go to a monastery where he spent the rest of his life. And we see here an example of, yes, by the grace of God, making friends of the mammon of iniquity. In other words, giving his goods to the poor, following Christ, using whatever was left in this world to gain heaven, to lay up treasure for heaven. And so, as we're told today, make friends of the mammon of iniquity. Well, what can we do? How can we accomplish this? Most of us are not able to leave everything and go become a monk. Well, what are we called to? How can we use everything to our eternal advantage, we who are in the world? Well, if you picture a, a fire, a f sometimes you see in the news these, these great forest fires, and they spread and they go, and everything in their path becomes fuel everything without distinction well to a heart that has the fire of charity everything becomes fuel for loving God for gaining heaven there's one author who speaks of you know in each of our lives as Catholics everything is sent by God. Everything is crafted by God to make us saints, to bring us to heaven. And he says what's so often lacking is one simple ingredient. Everything's there but one thing, and so we're lukewarm. And he says that one ingredient is a heart on fire with the love of God, on fire with charity. Charity which is the form of all the virtues, which simply means it directs everything in our life to the same goal, God love for his own sake. And so, certainly we can give hundreds of pointers on using the things of this world such in a virtuous way, but I think just simply give that. The key is a heart filled with charity. And how do we get that? Because once we have that, like I said, everything becomes fuel to grow in God's love. Joys, sorrows, possessions, friendships, everything. Well, the answer is very simple. The Eucharist. We don't give ourselves this charity, but we can open our mouths and receive the sacred heart of our Lord, which is on fire with charity. It's called the bread of sons. The panis filiorum. This bread which gives our hearts the same fire that burned the heart of our Lord. And the charity of Christ has a very special direction. 
or aspect, and it's, it's the charity of a son that loves his father. And so he gives that same love into our heart by giving us his spirit, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And he teaches us to use everything in this world with the nobility of a son. He teaches us that whether we eat or drink or whatever else we do, we do all for the glory of the God, of God, all for the glory of our Father. That's what the Eucharist teaches us. And so these things of the world, so many of which are necessary, we do live in the world. They don't draw us to damnation, but to salvation. Make friends of the mammon of iniquity, that when you shall fail, they may receive you into everlasting dwelling. The Eucharist is what will enable this to happen. And the Holy Ghost will give us, through this sacrament, the gift of knowledge. He'll increase it in us. We already have it by sanctifying grace. This gift of knowledge, which enables us, on the one hand, to see that creatures are completely empty. They will all fail. They will all die, rust, rot. And yet, at the same time, they can be lifts to God. Through them, we can go to God. This is the work of the Holy Ghost in our soul. And so on this day when, yes, this unjust steward is commended for being wise. When we're told to make friends of the mammon of iniquity. Follow the example of the saint who always asked one simple question in his life. Just one simple question in every circumstance. He would say, quid ad eternitatem. Meaning, what is this for eternity? And depending on the answer, he would use or disregard this creature, this situation. We ask this grace of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who really will, very importantly, she will, as we prepare, as we attend Mass, as we're at the foot of the cross, as we approach and receive the victim, she'll really prepare our hearts and our souls so that when he comes, he teaches us how to pass through these temporal goods that we do not lose eternal ones. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.